Let's talk about Chris Hemsworth's enormous on-screen presence. Um, as the latest Thor Love and Thunder trailer has him buck naked being held down by lightning. <clears throat> of course, and this is all the talk of the town now. Thor's divine patootie is front and center in latest Love and Thunder look. Now, the uh, continuing emasculation of Thor is something that I have a bit of a problem with, as I've talked about previously. In uh, Ragnarok, for example, he was a side character in his own goddamn movie. The Incredible Hulk was more of a central focus of that movie than Thor was. I mean, just think about this, right? In Ragnarok, Thor is beaten up and manhandled by random ruffians from A to B. He is knocked out via taser dart by a rogue Valkyrie who has decided to just give up on all of her history, yadi yadi yadi. Uh, he is then beaten to shit by Hulk, and when he finally begins fighting back and you're thinking, holy shit, could Thor actually do something cool in this show? Nope. Beep, bzzz, he is knocked out by electricity yet again. The god of thunder. At the end of the movie, he doesn't outfight the evil villainess. He does not outsmart her. He does not come up with some insane plan to bend the multiverse to his will. Instead, he surrenders, runs away, and destroys his home in the process. Eventually, too, of course, he gives up the throne to the Black Valkyrie because she would do a much better job of ruling New Osgard than he ever would. Oh, and by the way, he, uh, he also surrenders Smilnir to Captain America, who is apparently now handed it to his ex-girlfriend. Oof, I hate what they're doing to Thor, and the entire trailer, it doesn't seem like it's going to be ending anytime soon. In particular, the one scene where um, she, Jane, is like, oh my, Thor, how long has it been? Like two, one or two years? And he's like, three months, 58 hours and 72 days. For her, meeting and fucking the God of Thunder, you know, it was just, it was Wednesday, you know, you can't expect her to keep track of that shit. Whilst for him, it is, of course, the center of his entire universe. But beyond the obvious and ridiculous continuing emasculation of Thor, what is more interesting is the double standard surrounding all of this, and thank God the progressives do have a double standard, because otherwise, they wouldn't have a standard at all, and that would be terrible now, wouldn't it? Because whilst this is perfectly okay, and not only is it okay, it creates headline news, and it is generally just, oh my god, yes, naked Thor, double thumbs up, etc. Whereas Black Window, Window, Marvel Studios making conscious effort to not objectify women. Not objectify. Ass. Not objectify. Bare ass, not objectify, buck naked. <laughs> Once more, double standard. There was also the um, the recent one with uh, Wheel of Time, Rosamund Pike, on how male actors from the Wheel of Time dieted for nude scenes. What is? Ah, uh, yes. So Rosamund Pike has talked about how the male actors of the Epiphan series, the Wheel of Time, dieted and worked out for their noon scenes, while uh, uh, working out hard for the next scenes, and all the women are going out for lovely dinners. Because in the Wheel of Time, of course, it is the women who are in power, and the men are nothing more than pieces of meat to be hoard around with, disposable objects, etc. And that's. A okay. In fact, it's it's perfectly fine. It's okay. <laughs> Again, we've always known that feminism is not an equality movement. It is a superiority movement. But what I find so interesting about this, and by make no mistake, by the way, this is a one-to-one -one comparison right here. Women are like, oh, unobtainable beauty standards. We have to have the perfect bodies. It's impossible. Yada yada yada. And hey, you know what? Yeah, sure, I agree with you. Uh, just like Chris Hemsworth, for example, has a uh, dehydration regime before shirtless scenes. He does not drink water for what was it? Um, 
I think it was like uh, no water a day and a half before cold time. <laughs> so he doesn't drink water for 30 odd hours before he needs to take his shirt off because it'll make his muscle look better. A human can only survive about three days <laughs> tops without water. So um, basically he's a few hours away from passing away and about 12 to 20 to 30 odd from dying just because he needs to take his shirt off. What was, um, what was that, Rosamund? Uh, Because it, it, all right, okay. Here's the thing as well. It is entirely fun to have male sex symbols. In fact, we've always had them. They haven't gone away. <laughs> like, this isn't a thing that didn't used to exist. When we were objectifying women, which we absolutely were, we were also objectifying the men. Look at, for example, uh, Conan. That's a lovely one. Conan is an enormous muscled barbarian, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie, where he grows into an even larger muscled barbarian by <laughs> well, eating slave food and pushing a wheel for like a decade or so. Which is a slight thought, oh, but you know, never mind. Whereas now we have it all one way and all one way only because of course the people who are now in power here the people who are in charge have a very specific ideology where women must be put up on a pedestal they must be lauded loved and applauded and they must not be asked to do what will you know actually make them popular because uh, make no mistake this is going to make Thor love and thunder very popular amongst a certain audience. It is a simple fact, sex sells. And Hollywood has never quite forgotten that lesson, as once more demonstrated, because uh, we all know it. But uh, we also know that there is a very large and very shrill political movement that are in vehement opposition to one half of the sexualization. In fact, the whole Black Widow introductionary scene in, was it Iron Man 2, I think it was? They cannot stop screeching about that, as, well, Black Widow is presented as sexy, as hot, and attractive, and yet she also beats Tony Stark's ass. She is a top-trained assassin, for God's sake. She's never helpless or pointless in any way, shape, or form. She is a powerful character on screen, but also feminine. This is what we've completely forgotten about in tow. How? Even in many cases for the male can for main male characters, as demonstrated by Thor. Thor is not a strong character, he's not a good character, he's not even a character that's really evolving other than surrendering. In the very first uh, Thor movie, he is headstrong, he is bald, he is ambitious, he is rambunctious, he is out of control, and this has made him not worthy, and so Odin banishes him, and he can no longer raise his hammer. Okay, this is a good old-fashioned growing up story. He's going to discover himself, he's going to grow stronger, more determined, and more righteous. He does, and then he just keeps losing, and losing, and losing, and being humiliated. His growth at the moment is um, in uh, Ender Games, getting fat, then finally realizing, oh hey, maybe I should actually fight the fight against Thanos. He then loses his hammer to Captain America, and now to his ex-girlfriend, who he cannot stop obsessing about. He loses his home, and finally surrenders his throne. Thor's character has not grown, he has devolved into a child, a sidekick in his own movies. For God's sake. The whole joining up with Star-Lord thing, like, the whole Star-Lord, I, I don't mind the, uh, the, uh, or blah 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 of the universe, whatever the hell, galaxy or whatever. Guardians of the Galaxy, that was the term I was looking for, movies. I think they're pretty cool. Not my favorite, but eh, they do the job, but... Thor is on a completely different power level. Just... <laughs> it, it is not compatible. Thor can fight Ultron. That's the kind of shit Thor fights. He fights Thanos. He fights galactic level threats. To have him tag along with this just seems... silly, frankly. 
But again, it's because Thor's power level fluctuates rather wildly to the point that he can get his shit kicked by a bunch of scrapyard scavengers if the plot demands it. I'm gonna have to have a, a longer complaint about the whole uh, story arc of Thor at some point, but for now, just it's a ridiculous picture. Now this is um, this is Zeus, I think, over here. So he's being powered by not just electricity, but even so, he's the god of goddamn thunder. Can't you bind it with magic or something, or um, the, the magic rope of the Amazons? That would work. You know, you've got that. You can make him honest as well and have him look at Jane and debase himself some more. Like I've always loved you. I'm basically a giant lovesick puppy. Please treat me well, mistress. Something. Not oh, fucking lightning. <sighs> but yeah. I have gnats in my room. I hate summer, by the way. I'm missing winter already. <sighs> oh well. I suppose we could say that uh, in Thor Love and Thunder's defense, this movie is almost sure to be way, way, way more popular than Black Widow, if for no other reason than because it has not forgotten that sex does sell. Maybe in another 10 or 20 odd years, the uh, Hollywood staff, if they survive that long, and God help me, I hope not, they might learn the lesson that if you appeal to both sexes, your movie will be twice as popular. Oh well. Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a good day.